really might feel like we have to we have to spend more time right because we started so late mm -hmm. but we have to um, take a look at when, at how we can make that scalable because I know that besides you know the the workflows of having those gizmos volume mass and all of that stuff people would be like yeah but we can do that in other tools in a, to the same to to some degree right there's a lot of overlap here mm -hmm. but I want to show you the stuff that you can't do in other tools so and that is you know how can we make those layering projects scalable so one of the things that I really love in Instamat is how holistic things how, how things really are uniform in the way they work. So I can take my materials, I can create my, take my canvas materials, bring them to the layer stack. I can break, take my layer materials, bring them to the layer stack. I can even take a whole layering project, like if you double click to this, and by the way guys, do you, did you notice? I have one, I have four layering projects open at the same time and I can tap between. And if I'm funny like that, I can even open an element graph and you know, go back and forth. And here I could you know, work in my element graph, create a pearl and noise, create some great noise function that I instantly use in my layering project, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so going back to that project, this is the, this, the Instamat Create project, you can see it up here. What I want to do is I want to, you know, apply the same layering project from earlier like like for like, so I can just take that project and drag it onto my layering stack and the whole project will unfold here. So now this tab is looking exactly like this tab. It's pretty awesome and you can work off that basis. But you know, if something changes in this project, say, okay, the art director comes along and he's like, you know what, our, our, uh, this, is, this looks way too blue and red. We need this to be more, you know, more military colored. You need to desaturate the colors, make it more muted, make it darker like the other crates. So you do that, you know, you remove the saturation, do all the work, but then, you know, you hit command as you save it, you go back to your project and lo and behold, obviously it didn't change here because the, this is all like actual copies of the data. So that's a workflow that doesn't generalize well. Mm -hmm. And what's also amazing if you go to, um, to a completely different asset. So let's go to this asset. So this asset is completely different and you see we have in our layer editor, you can see we also have the baked data, you know, the mesh ID, the normals all baked and set up for this material already. So, so it's pretty clean. We did have a mention, do we, do, do we use ID, ID maps in, in our workflows? You, you can use it, here. but I wouldn't recommend to doing it. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that mesh ID maps have a lot of information in them that's very particular to this mesh, mm -hmm. right? Even if an object order changes, your mesh ID map might change. Right. That's why a lot of studios don't use mesh ID. They actually assign vertex colors mm -hmm. and then bake those vertex colors out like mesh ID maps. But I would, I would recommend to try to avoid it where possible and instead using something like mesh mask, right. where you can directly mask a mesh. And that's, that's some magic I want to show you here. So I'm going to, to my package again, and I'm going to take that modern crate and just drag it here again, like we did on the same asset. But check this out, that's insane. How the hell does this work? Right? It's, a, it's a completely different asset, but right. it, it, it looks finished already. We have all the parts masked, we have the volume mask, it works, we have the handles, they work, we have the decal, it works. How does this even work if everything works? I, it's mind-boggling to me how this can work. And the reason is that I built that other project in a way that it scales. And I mentioned this at, at the very beginning, guys. We can build projects that are not just... You know, where we don't just texture one asset, but we can build projects that are scalable. And by, we can make them scalable by using properties in the mesh file itself. So you can build a convention that applies to many different assets and Instamat can then understand what you use. It sounds more complicated than it actually is. Let me show you how that works. So if you look at this accent color, and again, what's awesome is I can just solo that layer, right? So mm -hmm, again, you know mm -hmm. exactly what happens here. So the way that this works, how does Instamat know where to apply the accent. So if you look at the, the volume mask, it looks perfect. It looks exactly like you know the mesh. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that we, instead of anchoring things on UVs like other applications do, we build a 3D volume around your mesh and then basically we figure out where this object anchors within that volume. So your volume can be, you know, the width can change, but we would understand and then reapply things to that volume mm -hmm. because we can tra easily translate things between what different differently sized volumes. Right. So you see this crate is much wider, but the mask automatically resized because it understands that this object has this volume, this object has that right. volume, right. and we do the magic automatically. That's that's one key ingredient here that we use this kind of 3D volume to anchor everything. But how does it work that Instamat knows where the handles are? And the magic happens in this mesh mask here. You see we have we don't no switch is activated. So we we didn't use that picking where we use pick the precise name. Instead, what we did is we used that mesh render filter name here. It's where you can write those trivial expressions like everything that has the name attachment in it. Every object on the FBX file that has the name attachment in it 
will be automatically masked. And you can have multiple matches, so you could even um, add a filter to it. Say you could do, I think that should work if you do, uh, let me see, strut. You see, mm -hmm. you can easily add masks to it. So even if your other mesh doesn't have it, no problem. Mm -hmm. It would just be ignored. So you can build a convention. And as long as your studio artists follow that convention, you can build projects that truly scale. And you could even run that on assets you have no idea about. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we mask everything off that has the um, attachment name in it. And the same thing here for the mask. We, for the metal mask, we simply mask off everything that has the name metal in it. And it's that easy. All you have to do is name your objects when you create them. And then down the line in your asset pipeline, you can begin, you know, having that, those benefits of scale, right? And you can save a lot of time by this. And the decal, it's the same. It understands the volume. It understands how things work. And it finds its place in the other volume and things work automatically. But I showed you guys this already, right? What if something changes again? The art director comes along again, he, you know, he knocks on the door and he's like, you know what, Jeremy, we, ch we changed our mind. We have to change the accent color too. <laughs> it needs to be completely different. You need to make that, I don't know, yellow mm -hmm. or blue or red. Let's, ch let's take this purple, yeah, right? He comes along, he's like, it has to be more, it needs to have the insta -lock color or something <laughs> like this. And you're like, okay, boss, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so you save that, you render, you export your project or you use it wherever. But then again, you go to the wooden crate and you, you have to apply the same color value. So you need to copy the color value and paste it all over the place in all of your rendering projects. Super annoying. And you do, we don't want you guys to do that. So in Instamat, there's a better way to do it. Instead of just, you know, you know, unfolding the whole project here, just like I love to do that, it's so easy. <laughs> Instead of unfolding it like this, you can actually create a element layer. And then here, I choose my package and I pick the project from the package. And this is creating an instance, and you can see that it's an instance because it's a, I call it the base project, because it's a single layer. And it, what's awesome is you can still control things like the base color, or you can control the, the effects of the roughness or the height, and everything would just work. And this is now a true instance, like it's a real instance in the sense of being an instance. So you can go back here, art director comes along and he's again, you know what, nobody <laughs> likes, nobody likes the, the pink, we need to have the instamat color here for launch. And then you change it to be the instamat color, you change the, the base color to be even more desaturated so the instamat color pops even more. So you save this and then this time you don't have to do anything because it just applies to your project because it's an actual instance and it's actually procedural. So we can go down and change the rendering resolution mm -hmm. to 1K for a mobile game or we can change to 4K or 8K or 16K and render the project in, in this way. It's really, really awesome how this stuff works and how it makes your projects more scalable when you use it properly. All right, so let's go back to the resolution of 2K for my working set here. And then we can continue working on it, right? I could now create a new multi-channel layer. Here I'm going to mask things off. I'm going to use the mesh mask. And this time I want to manually just quickly pick that part because this mesh, this, this um, project here is an extension. So it's fine if I just mask it like this. And I don't want to modify the height or any other channel. So I just disable the height the roughness, the metalness, AO, we just want to modify the color. And then here we want to blend that in maybe using a U transform or a soft light or a screen blend. And we can, you know, figure out exactly how we want to blend that. So that looks good, maybe a bit too much. So we lower the saturation to make it look interesting. And that's how easy it is to build on it. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.